Hi there, welcome to Nebby Invest. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a company that sometimes I think has one of the most interesting and unique names on the ASX, and then at other times I think has one of the most ridiculous and stupid names on the ASX, and that is Big Tin Can. And maybe you can understand why I'm thinking like that right now. So Big Tin Can is in the right sort of area. So they are a tech company, a SaaS company at that, and they are a business to business SaaS company in sales enablement. Now over the last four or five years, maybe even longer than that, uh, a tech company and a SaaS company have been in the right area. And those companies have done very well, quite well over that period of time. So before we have a look at their earnings for C, so the whole point of this video was to have a look at this, this report, just a few facts in regards to the company. So um, ticket code is BTH. Now, when I started uh, preparing this video, the market cap of Big, Big Tin Can was 400 million. I've had to revise that today because the share price has fallen quite a bit over the past few days. So the market cap right now is 340 million and falling because the share price is falling. Now, when it comes to revenue, most of the times when I look at the revenue um, in a video, I take either the trailing 12 months or the previous financial year. Here, I've given their guidance for the, the current financial year. So they did have guidance of revenue between 41 and 44 million. They revised that in this appendix 4C to 43 and 44. So this was not a downgrade, it was a maintaining the current guidance. Now, they also sometimes provide annual recurring revenue. The last annual recurring revenue I saw them provide or give was in the half yearly, which was given in February, and that was $48.4 million at the 31st of December. I wish they did update that in this Appendix 4C. I didn't see it in that. If I'm mistaken, can you just leave a comment? And you can see just below that, they are still operational cash flow negative in the training 12 months, negative $4 million. One of my favorite ratios for um, SaaS companies, particularly those who are not profitable, is to look at the price to sales ratio. Typically, when you calculate the price to sales ratio, you are dividing the market cap by the revenue, but in this case, I'm dividing the market cap by the annual recurring revenue that was current at the 31st of December, and that number is seven. Now, SEMBA, a number of seven for the price to sales ratio for a SaaS company is not too high. In fact, it's heading towards um, almost good value for this type of company historically or over the past five years, you could say. But there are a few tailwind or headwinds in the tech sector and SaaS companies, particularly those sort of companies that are not um, operational cash flow positive or free cash flow positive because uh, with increasing bond yields, these sort of companies will be hit because if we get increasing interest rates, you have to lower the value of these companies because their future cash flows, and that's how we value companies, is by their future cash flows or the present value of their future cash flows. And that present value of their future cash flows in a high interest rate environment would be valued much lower. And that's why these sort of companies have been under pressure during the last three or four months. So let's have a look at their appendix 4C, and maybe they've hit an inflection point and have become operational cash flow positive. Unfortunately, Big Ten Can is not operational cash flow positive, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself right there. So first things first, and always go straight to receipts from customers. And sometimes you might have an idea what you could expect. And with Big Ten Can, I did have some expectations to the receipts, and they didn't quite meet my expectations, but at least it was better than two quarters ago when I only had $4 million in receipts. But anyway, $12.2 million in receipts, and in isolation, that means nothing. You need to know the trend. Is receipts going up, going down, and we'll see that in the next slide. So make sure you stick around to see the trend of cash receipts for Big Tin Can. The most important number here is right down the bottom, and that tells you if the company is operational cash flow positive or negative. And for the quarter, uh, Big Ten Can was negative 3.4 million. And one of the reasons uh, they are negative is the staff cost. You can just go to the middle of this um, cash flows from operating activities. Uh, they spent $11.7 million on staff costs. So receipts from customers is 
barely covering their staff costs. So they are um, they do hire a lot of staff, a lot of labour, and that could be one area where they could be curbing costs. Do they need to have all this staff? And I would suggest maybe a lot of that staff is salespeople. Do they need that amount of salespeople in that company? So that's one thing maybe they could think about. Anyway, one positive about big 10 cans of Penix 4C was the cash on hand at the end of the quarter. And that's $59.1 million. And the whole reason it's $59.1 million is because the amount of capital raisings they have done, they did one in December, something like 20 to $30 million. And that money came through in the March quarter. So that's why the cash on hand has increased. Now they can use that cash on hand to do more acquisitions or they can just use that cash because uh, for operational purposes because they are still burning cash in their operations. So many things they can do with that cash and it's one of the most important decisions management have to decide what to do is how to allocate their capital. So in this case, they have to decide what to do with the cash on hand. One of the most important things when you look at a company is to see whether they can grow their revenue or cash receipts through time. Because if a company can't grow their revenue or cash receipts, uh, unless they really cut costs, they're not going to grow their profitability or their cash flows. So um, very important to see what the trend is through time in regards to receipts or even revenue if you're just looking at half yearly and yearly results for uh, bigger companies. So anyway, what is good for Big Ten Can is they are growing seeds. It's not a straight line. Um, we do see a bit of lumpiness in there, particularly when you go to October 2020, only $4.5 million in that quarter. I'm not sure why, but that actually is the quarter that I think sentiment in this company shifted. And we can see that when we look at the charts in the next few slides. So a nice upwards trend here. I did think they had turned the corner and reached an inflection point in April 2020 with that $14.9 million uh, quarter, but maybe that was just uh, an unfortunate timing because that was at the, the peak in the COVID-19 financial panic and maybe the company has been affected by the pandemic and that's why we haven't seen those levels reach since. Now, since April 2017, when they IPO'd, they have grown receipts at a compound quarterly growth rate of 8.5%, which is quite good, quite healthy. And over the past two years, they have grown those receipts at 10.7%. So a still very similar growth rates. doesn't look like it's slowing down if you take away that lumpiness. And that's the main thing here. Sometimes with these sort of companies, you just have to ignore those really down quarters because that's just a byproduct of the lumpiness of their receipts. Onto the charts for Big Ten Can. I always like to look at least at two sort of time frames and a weekly chart and a daily chart for companies. I like to look at the weekly chart just to see what the long-term trend is, if there is any. So I like to look at least three preferably five or 10 years. So with Big Ten Can, they did IPO in early 2017. So that's the whole period here. And we can see with the um, share price from when they IPO'd to just prior to COVID-19 financial pay, the share price was in a nice looking uptrend. In fact, the share price went from 20 cents around the time they IPO'd to a high of $1. Then the COVID-19 financial panic hit and the share price went from a dollar all the way down to a low of about 25 to 30 cents. An ideal time to buy in hindsight, of course. And then we saw another quick bull run in the share price. It went from 30 cents to a high of $1.60 in October 2020. And that's when they released that Appendix 4C with only $4.5 million of cash receipts. And that's when the sentiment in Big Tin Can shifted. And ever since that high of $1.60 in October last year, we've seen the share price go down and down and down. We've seen little periods of the share price increasing for a few weeks, but the trend is definitely down since that October 2020 Appendix 4C. The final thing I want to show you is the daily chart for Big Tin Can over the past year. A lot of things to look at here, and I think it's one of the, it's a very interesting chart because you can learn a lot about human psychology, about technical analysis, just by looking at this chart. So if we go back to May 2020, 
we were in developing uptrend. And that uptrend actually lasted until October or late October 2020. But there were a few bumps along the way. So twice the share price tried to get above uh, $1 there and there in June and late July, but failed. And it failed because $1 it's just a round number and round numbers tend to be natural resistance levels for companies share price to move through simply because we like to sell and buy at round numbers it's just human psychology so one dollar was a resistance level for big tin can and to break through a resistance level like one dollar you need the share price to move through it with strength and when i talk about strength i'm meaning high volume and we definitely got that in late August. The share price moved through $1 really quickly on massive volume. It was actually the highest volume we've seen in one year. And that meant that resistance level at a dollar became support. And typically when you see a move like this uh, through a resistance level with strength, you can expect a short-term rally in the share price. And we saw the share price increase from $1 to $1.60 in two months. And it reached a high of $1.60 in late October. And then unfortunately, the company released a negative Appendix 4C to the market. And that was the, the Appendix 4C where they only had $4.5 million of receipts. And that's the time where the sentiment in the company shifted from positive to negative. It also shifted my sentiment from positive to negative, and that's where we saw a new downtrend develop, and that's the downtrend right there. Now, as the share price started to decrease, we saw twice the share price move towards that support level at a dollar, and then rebound off that right there, and then again in uh, early November, and then again in January. So support had held twice. So what we didn't want to see is the share price move through $1 on high volume. Unfortunately, we saw that in late February, around the time they released their half yearly report. It was also the time where there was a fair bit of negative sentiment in the overall tech sector because of rising bond yields. So naturally enough, we saw the share price from then uh, just decrease to around 80 cents, rebounded off 80 cents, and actually did rally. And in fact, the share price moved through that new resistance level of a dollar right there. In fact, that move above $1 also broke the downtrend. But there was one thing I didn't like when I saw the share price move through a dollar, and that was the volume. So when you compare the volume of that potential breakout and compare it to that breakout in late August, you can see how significantly lower the volume was. And that's showing you there was no strength in the movement in the share price and it could fail this breakout, and it did fail. The share price did move above a dollar, stayed above a dollar for a few weeks, but then failed when they released their Appendix 4C on April 30, and the share price has moved towards 80 cents. And what is interesting right now is 80 cents is a good support level, maybe not a good support level, but it is a support level because that's the previous low we saw in early March. If the share price of Big Team can falls below 80 cents, that would, would be bearish, and I'm not sure how much lower their share price could fall below then. So at this point in time, I'm fairly bearish in regards to Big Tin Can's share price. Uh, the market did not like their appendix 4C at all. When you see a share price down 12% on good volume, that's showing there's a bit of bearishness still in the market. That's all I've got on this quick take Appendix 4C for Big Tin Can. I hope you didn't mind my rant. If you do have any comments about this company, I do know there is a fair few, a fair bit of interest in this company. I do get quite a few comments in regards to Big Tin Can. So if you are a shareholder and you want to clarify something maybe I've got wrong, make sure you leave a comment. I am only human. I do make mistakes. If you thought I've made a mistake by selling out, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. So if you do need to seek financial advice, make sure you find someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's all for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it and have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye.